If there's one part of BC's audience that takes its nostalgia seriously, it's the sports fans. Hi, I'm Bob Lobel. Just about everywhere in New England, names, faces, and uniform numbers of the great and near greats are conjured up at the drop of a hat. New England sports figures are the stuff from which legends are made. Why, just think about the names of the guys who have occupied the sports desk at WBZ TV and then gone on to fame and fortune and glory. Guys like Dick Stockton and, and Len Berman and, and Roger Twybell and Jimmy Myers. And of course, there's Charlie Austin. Well, let's go back and start at the beginning when the games made bigger headlines than their front office deals and sports were about to become part of television history. Look sharp, feel sharp, be sharp and listen. In the fall of 1948, just a few months after WBZ TV first went on the air, the Gillette Company put 100 television sets outdoors in the Boston Public Garden so 10,000 fans could watch the Braves in the series on WBZ TV. If anything sold television to New England, it was sports. If you couldn't get to your college football game, WBZ TV brought it to you. And if you couldn't get out to the baseball game, well, just imagine Ted Williams, the splendid splinter himself, right in your living room. Kirk Gowdy came up from New York in 1951 to become the voice of baseball in Boston. We had only three cameras to start with, one in back of home plate, one in back of first, one in back of third. Three or four years later, uh, they wanted to put the center field camera in. I remember Joe Cronin had a big argument. He thought that center field camera picture was too good, but the fans would stay home instead of coming to Fenway Park. You could see the catcher signs. You could see everything from the center field camera. Finally, uh, Joe relented, and they put the center field camera in, and we had four television cameras to do the Red Sox game. Whatever you think of the Red Sox, you've got to hand it to the fans. For decades, they dreamed an impossible dream until a legend named Yaz and a team known as the Cinderella Kids Thanks. went all the way to the pennant. Lombard scores. Adair will score. It's tied up. <laughs> Little soft pop-up. Petroselli will take it. He does. The ball game is over. The Red Sox win it. And what a mob on this field. They're coming out. It of happened again in 75 and again in 86. But the World Series just kept getting away. Roller up along first. Behind the bag. It gets through Buckner. Here comes Knight and the Mets win it. Can a baseball town become a football town? It did in 86 when the Patriots fought their way to the Orange Bowl. But our greatest moment in football was collegiate. Boston College, Miami, when I was standing in the end zone um, doing a stand-up about this great BC-Miami game and how BC's Doug Flutie had thrown for over 450 or 500 yards, but BC couldn't stop Miami in the final minute and a half when Flutie unleashed this majestic football into the air and Gerard Phelan caught the ball about four and a half feet from where I was standing. 